in late 2018, you start to work as a monitor tech for Three Days Grace, including a tour with Disturbed. Um, I actually saw this tour in, in Toronto. Um, can, can you share any stories about that period of time? Anything cool that happened? Anything behind the scenes? What it's like working with Three Days Grace? Anything about Disturbed? Uh, you know, I've seen Three Days Grace a ton of times. I just saw them at Blues Fest here in Ottawa recently, like, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. And um, Disturb, what stands out to me is their singer. Um, David just has oozes this like power. It's it's crazy. Like when he's on stage, it's not just how powerful his vocal is, but it's like his presence. It's like the way he moves is like slow and powerful. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what comes to me. Yeah, totally makes sense. I saw, you know, little snippets of the show every night, so that makes a lot of sense. He definitely, he's got, like, you know, all the confidence in the world, you know, and he's, he's a skilled guy, right? And especially on that tour where, um, you know, they were putting a lot out there. It was a big tour. The stage was super, super cool. It was basically, it was like a big arrow. Uh, actually had different tiers, right, all the way down to the floor. And then a huge um, crescent video screen all in behind them. Right. So the production was awesome and it was a lot of fire. It was a ton of fire and it was neat what they were doing too. Like it wasn't just flame pots. They'd have uh, stuff uh, that would drop because um, the uh, I'm sorry, their uh, truss was triangular over the stage too. So they had basically rope that would drop like kerosene rope and that would actually light on fire too. Right. So it almost just looked like there was just like the stage was on in, in like uncontrolled flames. Right. So really cool spectacle. Um, and all the guys were great to, to hang out with, uh, you know, Dan Dunnigan, the guitar player, every single day. I don't think there was uh, a day that he didn't every day when I was in the monitors, he'd be coming through because they were getting ready to do their sound check as, as I was setting up the monitor desk for three days. Grace, Right. And he'd always come over and chat with me for a couple minutes. Right. And see if he got up to anything the night before, if it was, you know, the old roadie Friday the night before, like the day off kind of thing. And, you know, like he's a great guitarist. He's a great player. Yeah. He's, he's really good. Um, getting to, to see him in sound checks and, uh, and then nightly, um, just how solid the player and, and how the way he riffs is like super unique. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think of it because, uh, uh you know, disturbed. They're just like, it's just big, powerful. It seemed like those straight ahead, like metal riffs and that, but there's a, Really neat little twist edge to them when you really get listening to them and watch him play, right? He's a great player. Um, yeah, the band's all really good. You know, they're, they're definitely really good at what they do. And that tour was great. Um, you know, I can't say anything bad about it other than, you know, just a couple of uh, late nights and early mornings, you know, which naturally happens on tours. So a little tired here and there. But uh, but otherwise, working for the Three Days Grace guys was, was awesome. They treated me uh, great. A lot of respect there a lot of you know fun guys they're very very thankful just like a lot of other bands are of of uh you know 20 years of being able to do this and, and then some and you know keep producing number one hits i think we were on the road actually that january yeah i think they got they uh announced their 14th number one uh song i guess in, in the US. they're now they just announced their 17th so the new yeah. album has produced three more number ones three and more. they yeah. have of all time, of all time on Billboard Rock. So it's like modern rock or alternative rock or whatever those charts are for rock. Yeah. There's there's no band that has more number one singles in Three Days Grace, period. And you think of like, you know, Stained and uh, Shine Down and uh, Godsmack. Like you think of the biggest of the big over the last 20 plus years. And none of them have produced more than uh, Three Days Grace, which is crazy. It, it's kind of nuts to think about, right? You know, especially like, like when I was on that tour and they got the uh, number 14, uh, they had just surpassed, I think it was Van Halen, right? So it's like, it also makes you think, it's like, holy jumping, right? Uh, and then now that it's 17, it's, it's what, an, that's, what an accomplishment from a bunch of kids from Norwood, Ontario, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, man, if a band has won number yeah. one hit you know if you have like a top 10 hit it's a big deal so yeah. having one number one hit is insane and yeah. you know having three is incredible but 17 like that's you know a full-length album is 10 or 12 songs so they have like an album and a half worth of number one hits it's unbelievable 
God, it's quite ridiculous. Like, yeah, yeah, every record spawns like three number ones, right? So, like, can't they leave some space for other bands to have number ones? Yeah. You know, yeah, they're being hogs, eh? You know, I think they're quite fine with uh, with it too. <laughs> they're they're okay with it. 